Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're turning a object, a black and white object in Photoshop into a vector object and we're also going to save it as a custom shape. Some hand-drawn elements here. I'm just going to grab one of them. So I'm going to the lasso tool. I'm just going to drag around one of these shapes. I'm going to copy it with Control or Command C. I'm going to create a new document, clipboard size. That's going to be the size of what I'm about to paste in. Press Control or Command V to paste it in. Now I'm going to the Magic Wand tool with a pretty high tolerance set here on the Magic Wand tool. I'm going to click on the background and just press delete to remove it. I want to thicken up my lines here. They're a little bit thin so you can thicken up your lines before you actually create your vector shape. For this I'm going to choose Filter Other and then choose Minimum. A setting of one or two is going to thicken these lines. This is the setting of two and you can see that this was the original and this is the thickened up lines. I think that's pretty good for me. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll click OK. Next up I need to select the line work that I want to be my vector shape. So I'm still going to sit here with the magic wand tool. I'm just going to with a really high tolerance click on my line because my lines are not pure black and white, they're sort of grey in parts because of the fact that this has been hand drawn, I want a pretty high tolerance setting. If it was straight black and white, then it, I wouldn't need to have nearly such a high tolerance. Now I'm going to come down here and just hover over the line and right click because I want this menu. I'm going down here to make work path. What that allows me to do is to convert this bitmap image into a vector shape. So I'm going to click on this and now I'm asked to set the tolerance. Now one or two pixels is probably going to be what you want. I'm just going to set it to three to show you what not to do or what you're going to get if you set it too high. If I turn this layer visibility off, you'll see that some of these lines are running into each other. I just think that that's probably not the setting I want. So I'm just going to press Ctrl Z to run backwards and then again right click and go to make work path and this time just set a lower tolerance. I'm going to set one for this. I think this is a cleaner looking sort of image so I can test it by just turning that layer off. If I'm happy with that, I'm going here to the Paths palette and this is the work path. This is the vector shape. You can see here, these are all anchor points. So what we can do is just double click on that and give it a new name. So that's now saved that as a vector object and we can save it as a custom shape in Photoshop as well, really simply. We'll just go with it still selected and choose Edit and Define Custom Shape. So I'm going to call this Bathing Box. I'm going to call it number two because I think I've already got a number one there. So I'm just going to click OK. Now because it's saved as a custom shape, we can use it anytime in future. So I'm just going to create a new document, different size this time. I'm going to the custom shapes tool here and go and pick up the last shape that I created, which is this one bathing box too. If I hover over it, you'll see its name appearing in the tooltip. I want it to have a fill, but I don't want it to have a stroke. So I can just choose a fill color here. I'm going to turn the stroke off. And then I'm going to hold the shift key as I drag out my custom shape. And if I click away, you can see that we've got the shape now in the document filled with the color that we selected. And this will be a shape layer, so it can be edited. So we can go to any one of these shape tools and we can easily change the fill on our shape. And of course the shape itself is available here in the Paths palette. This is a vector path so it's fully editable. Let's just go back to our original here and if we didn't like something here it would be able to be edited. So I can go to the Direct Selection tool for example and select this door handle and press Delete to remove it and that's removed them from this vector object. And again if I wanted this shape saved as a custom shape I would just select it and go to Edit and then Define Custom Shape. So this is going to be Bathing Box 3 and this one does not have the door handle on it. Of course in the same way as you could edit the original shape, you can also edit a shape inside a document. So here we've got the shape that we 
drew earlier and if we want to make some changes to it it's perfectly possible. I'm just going to smooth out this little bump in here so I'm going to the direct selection tool here and I'm just going to realign it here. Now this is going to just turn the live shape into a regular path that's just fine no problem with that at all and so it would be very easy to make changes to the actual drawing here by just editing the individual anchor points and you can also get rid of this door handle if you wanted to so let's go and get the door handle just select over those objects press delete and the door handle has gone so any of those changes could be made to the original image and then saved as the custom shape but it's also possible to adjust your custom shape once it's actually embedded inside a document so we're just editing this bathing box inside this document so anytime you need to convert an object, a black and white object or a colored and white object into a vector object in Photoshop, it really is as easy as making a selection on it and then right clicking and making a work path out of it. And of course while you're there adding it to your custom shapes collection is another good idea and a very simple thing to do. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.